Yeah, obviously we go uh, one game at a time around here. Um, but we do want to kind of mention the upcoming games at home, the remaining uh, games in the schedule. Really, well, last year in the Irwin Center, just want to make sure that people uh, have, have a chance to come watch our team play and watch a basketball game in the Irwin Center uh, this final year. Next game being 11.30 uh, a.m. Saturday game. All sorts of things out there on this one. The big narrative that we would really appreciate you guys helping us push across is um, that the students uh, are going to be the priority in this next game coming up. Any student that has that big ticket is going to be able to get in this game somehow, some way, all the way into uh, you know filling the upper deck as well. So with that game being 11:30, and with the attention that our uh, team is uh, appreciating and enjoying right now, I just encourage the students to get here early. Uh, some talks of students camping out the night before. Uh, we're going to try to set some things up for those students right outside the E door, which is their entrance, and we'll kind of see how that thing materializes. But um, no student will be turned away uh, at, at, the, at this next home game. Then it gets into one more game, which will be a midweek game uh, that we enjoy. I think it's TCU. And then finally, the last game ever in the Irwin Center. Uh, we're looking forward to honoring all the donors, uh, players, coaches, season ticket holders, just everybody that's enjoyed Texas basketball here over the last several decades in the Irwin Center. So these three games are, are special to us for a lot of reasons, but we want to get the word out uh, on that. Uh, tickets are available for those uh, remaining. Uh, last two games, I think this next one sold out, and then the next two games are still some select seats uh, available. So appreciate all y'all in your different ways getting the uh, word out to our fans. Thank you. Uh, that's a tough. That's a tough question. There's there's been a lot of buckets, but uh, I'd probably say one of my favorite ones at UMass was we were in a close game with Rhode Island at home, and I inbounded the ball because they just scored. We were down two, and I told my point guard as he was running down the court, I was like, "Cut my man off. I'm gonna shoot it," and he cut him off, caught it, jab stepped, shot it, went in, place went crazy. That was that was probably my most memorable bucket there. Um, he, Do you have any memories of defense? <laughs> yeah, the next possession actually, I got a pretty big block. <laughs> that might be one of the only ones though. <laughs> um, here, I guess it was just that most recent one that that they happened to catch on camera while I was talking to one of the the fans in the front row. Um, I'd say it's both because I think that's something that comes along with the game. It's in order for me to be where I want to be, part of it is me calling for the ball when I'm open. And another part of it is just being able to recognize as the game's going on who has the hot hand, who who has their, their mojo going at the time. And I think that's something that all the guys recognize and we played off of it. Is that something that you've grown a little more comfortable with as you've played more with the guys and got to know them and been in this, this program and this system for longer as opposed to maybe when you first got here, everybody's still kind of feeling each other out and maybe a little more tentative than, hey, you know, I'm in the zone, just feed me the ball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with with so many, with so much talent that we have on this roster, I think we we all have we all have our own games and we're, we're used to scoring in so many different ways. And I think we're, we're finally at the place now where we realize all the ways that we can score and how we can play off of one another in order for all of us to benefit. Bob and Ben, what, what happened on that play where you said, you're saying watch this? Is that what you're saying to the fans? Yeah, I, to be completely honest, I don't know what came over me, but I mean, I, I knew the play call and I knew that they weren't going to be expecting it. And the, the guy just kind of was, was looking at me and we made eye contact and I just that's just what had happened. And, You know, I think it's been like three games in a row now or something like that where I've banked the three in. But, uh, hey, it went, it, it went in, so I can't complain. So, I mean, I, I promise I'm a better shooter than that. <laughs> and, and I'm going to stop using the bank board coming up here. <laughs> what, what was your reaction? Because when you were running back out the floor, you were, you were, even you were kind of laughing. 
Yeah, yeah. There's a, that's because like the first thing that came through my mind was like you banked another one, like like you did it again. But that w that was honestly my first reaction. And I couldn't do anything but laugh at it. It could be a good name, image, and likeness out there if any of the local banks are interested in talking to Trey. Brian, speaking of Trey, the, the thing about that video is that what, what I saw was that guy playing with a lot of confidence, right? And I wonder, did you feel like that that confidence has permeated itself throughout the entire locker room? Is everybody feeling as confident as you look in that? In uh, I would believe so. I think um, talking to the guys that we were all – really on the same page at this point in the season and we understand the schedule that we have ahead and we understand all the talent that is in our locker room and we understand that on certain nights we're going to need some guys to have some special games and we're all going to have to bring our best every time we step on the court whether that be in practice shoot around or game come game time that we we're, we're trying to compete for something bigger here. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that was actually the word I was going to use. We're starting to develop that that on court swagger that 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 comes with the the brand of Texas, and we have to bring that every single night to win our games. So I wouldn't say that there would be a need for it because that's what's happening anyways. It's like every, every day we come in, we're like, yo, we, we know what it is. We got to handle business. We know what's coming up. This happened in the league last night. This happened the day before. You, this is our opportunity. This is our window. We have, to, we have to take it. We have to play our best games coming up because we have literally, I think, the toughest schedule <laughs> in college basketball coming up here in the, in the next stretch. So I think that's just something that we've naturally all gelled together and, and understand because it's it's literally every single day, every single night in the group chat, we're going, talking about it, make sure everybody's on the same boat and we're all trying to do this. Two last ones for Troy, Brian, go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted too, is that we, we talked with Coach about you know, the, group, the, uh, the overall group experience that, that the team has collectively, but it's almost like I wonder if now that's when it's really starting to show is how, how older guys, yeah. everybody on a mission, Yeah, I think I think that's the point where we're at is because we've all experienced the game at different places, at different areas, in different ways. And I think at this point, we were all really bringing our minds together. And and I say we, we are all leading in a different way when it comes to the locker room. But at the same time, we're all following in the coach's footsteps. They're, they're, they're planning, they're paving the road for us. And we're listening to them, listening to what they what they're telling us to do. And at the end of the day, they've been there before. A lot of guys in our locker room haven't, and I think we understand that, and we know what to do moving forward. Bob, last one. How do you, how do you describe what Christian brings? He's been pretty consistent this year, but it seems like in the last week he's really started to kind of take. It yeah, to I would say CB has has really started to find himself because I know. As, as a team, we, we have all had our certain moments where we were unsure of what we were supposed to be doing at the time because there's just there's so many dynamics we're all trying to merge into one. And I think, I think CB, is fi he finally found, he found himself again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that he, he really lost himself, but like he, found, he found that edge that, that he needed to bring back. And it's like even me personally with CB, I think we have a really good relationship. And it's like every single day I'm talking to him, I'm in his ear, I'm like, yo, like, I, we need this CB every single day. You cannot let up. We need it every day. Keep, keep leading us. Keep rebounding the way you're rebounding. Keep putting your imprint on every single possession in the way that you can. And I think he's really listening to that, and he's, he's obviously showing it on the court. Trey, thank you. <coughs> thank you, guys.
this team together with all these newcomers, particularly over the last five or six games, you've had those. Yeah, I think we're going in the right direction, uh, but I think we've been going in the right direction since day one. Uh, I think we still have a whole other level of ceiling. So it's nice to see the guys, you know, get some confidence through success. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't think any of us came here to win, you know, games in early or mid-February. And so we understand, you know, the opportunity that lies ahead. Um, so not trying to be, um, you know, anything less than positive, but I, I don't, I, I think we got a long ways to go. Yeah, it's a great word, opportunity. That's what every one of these games is. Uh, you know, it's the next game on the schedule in the Big 12. Chance to play a road game uh, always challenges your team. Uh, you know, Baylor's as good as anybody. I've always thought there's a handful. I don't know what that number is, 12, 15, less than that, a little more than that of teams that really have a chance to, to win six games in a three weekend tournament. Um, I believe we're one of those teams. Um, there's a lot of outside voices uh, that might disagree, but I, I just think, uh, you know, if our team plays as well as we can play, we can beat anybody in college basketball. Baylor is definitely one of those teams uh, worthy of being ranked number one for portions of this season. Um, you know, like all of us, they've gone through a little adversity lately just in terms of roster and getting everybody back and healthy. Uh, but we expect them to be at full speed on Saturday when we play. Yeah, every season's a journey, you know, and there's steps along the way, and you can't skip steps. And um, I think all, all of those games, you know, I, I would tell you that opening night we had some things here, and Gonzaga game, first half versus second half, and uh, the chance to take our team on the road to a to a great environment, a, you know, an NCAA tournament Seton Hall team, and um, you know the champions, they they know how to learn and continue to improve no matter what the scoreboard says, and. Most teams, you know, they only get better after a loss and they get a little bit fat headed after a win. But this team's a little different. We've stayed the course and, um, you know, I had a little success on the scoreboard recently and that's great for the fan base and, and all that. But, you know, we just, look, we got practice here in a few minutes and we're just going to try to get better again today. CB, yeah, he's just a talented guy, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things. You know, he has an identity of how hard he plays and rebound, and his athleticism and his emotion. But uh, he also has a, a lot of other things going on. He's a really good basketball player. He can dribble, pass, and shoot, and finish. Um, he can guard five different positions. He's a talented guy, and I think um, you know, I try to get CB to understand, embrace who you are, but also embrace the. Um, the next step in your game that you can get to. So I think he's going to be a great pro for a lot of different reasons. And he's just a talented guy. Um, he can do a lot of different things. And, um, you know, one thing at this level, you know, when you're playing, you want to simplify and, you know, what exactly do I need to focus on? But when you're as talented as him, as many of our other players on our roster, sometimes it's not easy to simplify because there's so many things that we need him to do. Um, above all, he's got a great spirit. You know, he's a good mood guy. He's, he's one of the guys when you walk in the facility, uh, doesn't matter kind of what's going on in the, in the win-loss record, he's going to be him. You know, he, he brings it every day. He has a steadiness to him. He's got a little Ted Lasso in him. And um, our team needs it. And uh, he's just fun to be around. He's the ultimate competitor, but he's also a fun guy to be around. Uh, some of them did. You know, we talk a lot about, um, look, you, you go play a game, right, and you, you hit the game-winning shot. Then the next day in the film room, you're, you're who you are. Well, the night before, if everything went the same and you missed the shot, 
you still are who you are sitting there in that film room the next day. So I think what's more important is like where you're heading and, and um, you know, who are we? And I think we all know who we want to be and we're working really hard on, on being that. So yeah, don't get too high, too low, just kind of stay the course, especially in this league. Um, but yeah, I think the guys have been great this year. And we got a lot of veteran guys and there hasn't been a lot of up and down in our locker room. There's always up and down outside your locker room. That's just today's world. Um, but our players have been pretty steady. Yeah, I think specific uh, with recent games with Timmy is he's just, uh, you know, he's trusting, he's trusting himself and he's trusting uh, the, the the game more. Uh, I mean, look, Timmy Allen's a really good shooter, and uh, but he's also a really good driver, and he's a guy that can get to the free throw line. So it's always that fine line between, you know, do I go get the free throw line, do I shoot this open shot? And he's just really tr starting to kind of trust the game. Uh, but Timmy's a guy. I mean, Timmy's a green light guy for us if he's open and his uh, shooting game shots all the way out to the three-point shot, too. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'll be the same guy sitting right here when he has a game where he hits multiple threes and we win a big game somewhere down the line. He's a really good shooter. Uh, I thought the last game he just kind of took open shots. Um, wasn't trying to turn down a good shot to try to get something better. Um, I think he really slowed down a little bit on the offensive end, and he just competed like hell every possession like he always does. Well, first of all, that's college basketball, and we're not even the oldest team in the Big 12, I don't think. Uh, so this is, uh, this is portal. This is guys trying to stay old in this league, and uh, we've understood that um, formula for a long time, and I think uh, there's no more secret. You know, There's a relationship in college basketball between experience and winning. You can't deny it. Uh, it's like why some of these teams that have you know six five-star guys, three one-and-dones, you don't see him regularly in the Final Fours. I mean, you know, there's, it's undeniable, uh, the relationship between experience and winning. Look at the last few national champions. And um, not necessarily the relationship between age and winning. If that was the case, then, you know, I would be, you know, at every military base in the world trying to get those 24, 25-year-old guys that could still play. Or I would be, uh, that, that's not how it works. But I think experience and winning there is. And so um, with our guys, it's always been one of our, um, our DNA ingredients. I mean, it's 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 supposed to be one of our identities that we're an experienced team that's been through a lot. I think that's starting to show up here in February, and ultimately it'll have to be our identity in March for us to be successful. Yeah, let me go ahead. Uh, Coach, you, I know you mentioned that your coaching logic is taking it one game at a time, uh, especially with the Kansas game down to the wire. How do you feel it's a loss for them after that, and how are you going to take that approach to the game again? Best questions in college basketball. Locker room felt great. It always does. It's one of the special parts about uh, college basketball when everybody in the organization works so hard towards trying to win a game. And you know the other team did the same thing. When you're fortunate enough to win, uh, there's just a feeling of uh, it's really good. You know, to me, it always goes to the players. I just kind of look around the room and I enjoy their their happiness and their success. And it's not just the guys that played in the game. It's those guys that helped the team get ready and practice. Uh, we, we're really uh, fortunate this year to have guys like Creative and Cole and our team that bring it every day in practice and help us win. It's also those GAs and managers and assistant coaches and staff people. And um, But yeah, there's nothing quite like a locker room after a win because there's just a bunch of people that put everything into it the last certain days or certain hours. And to see it materialize is always special. Yeah, every team's different. Uh, it's the trust factor. Uh, you know, players want a coach they can trust, and uh, it's exactly what coaches want. Coaches want players they can trust. So, um, you know, the guys understand kind of how to hydrate, for example. And with some younger teams, you know, we might be following them to the urinal. 
um, with some experienced teams. We remind them of what they're supposed to do and get their levels to warn. Uh, you know, there's a relationship between uh, recovery and success. And, uh, you know, with younger teams, you, you uh, got to swing by the uh, players' housing from time to time and check it with older teams that you trust they're doing what is supposed to be done. So it's the same message and it's the same um, pillars of what we think it takes to win. Uh, but absolutely, with older teams, you have a little bit more trust factor. So um, you spend that time maybe maybe on other things. So um, we, we've coached all. You know, this isn't our first rodeo. I've coached really young teams. I've coached experienced teams. So um, I think it all comes down to the trust factor. And I, I think this year's team, they've been fun to coach because we've got some veteran guys that understand what they're supposed to be doing. Mistakes are made from time to time, no doubt. Nobody's perfect, myself included. Um, but. You know, it's nice to have some veterans in that locker room this year that are about the right things. Two last cookies flip and then Ryan's flip. Coach, what you've seen on film from Taylor, what, how, could they, how could they be able to come close to replicating this year what they did last year, even with the obvious big names they lost on last year? Well, to me, it starts with Coach Drew, and um, he's just done a great job. Uh, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people in the history of our sport have been able to put good teams on the court from time to time, but only the uh, the Hall of Fame type guys, I think, find the consistency. And I think uh, you have to recognize what Coach has done, you know, leaving Valpo and going to Baylor and what he's built over many years. So their program's not defined by one of their Elite Eight teams or this team or this player. It's it's Baylor basketball, and I don't think they're even defined by their, their national champion ship because they just continue to be relative so um, I think it's just, it's a program uh, it's not just a one team or one player and so you got to give coach Drew credit on that uh, a lot of respect for him and what he's built there they got really good players too uh, they've benefited from guys coming back that played on last year's team that have all gotten better and they've benefited from the portal and they've benefited from high school recruiting so they're a real mixture of returners New players, uh, high school guys, and new transfers. So they're 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 a really good team. Um, a lot of really good teams in the Big 12 this year. I think Baylor's one of those. We'll see how this thing shakes out in February, and as March uh, is right around the corner. And I think there's several teams in our league that could play in April this year, and Baylor's definitely one of them. Yeah, so the way we do it, everybody does it a little different, and I'm sure there's people on our staff that do it different than me. But um, you know, I always kind of like to get through that first round of the fight, first half half of the fight. So, like an 18 round fight in the Big 12. So when we make that nine or 10, we'll kind of peek up and, and look at where we're at. So you know, we did that recently, and um, there's some big games coming up that are going to dictate kind of where everybody falls into this deal. But um, I know this; it's our first year here. We're building the program, and we're right in the middle of the fight. Anybody that would disagree with that, you know, I would respectfully disagree right back with them. I think we control our own destiny in a lot of ways, and that's all you can ask for in this league uh, to be sitting here in February in the back, in the, on the back nine. And I'm not even a golfer. It's pretty good. Back nine. Back nine. I don't think I've ever said that in my life. It's a great bar in my hometown called the, uh, the 19th Hole. We say that from time to time, but the back nine, I've never said that. Back nine. Back nine. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Sorry about that.